welcome to another experience with the Methodist Voices in Word and Song television ministry. We are so happy that you could join us. Today is the 12th Lord's Day after Pentecost. Please have your hymnals and Bibles ready as we celebrate in Word and Song. I am Barbara Hilton of the Western St. Andrew Circuit and I will be your liturgist for today. The message will be brought to us by the Reverend Audrey Knott, Minister for the Portmore Circuit. We are truly delighted to have her deliver the message today. Each Lord's Day at 1.30 p.m., when we gather online, we can make the worship experience more meaningful by resisting the urge to engage in other tasks while we worship, and where possible, to give full attention to God and so receive the blessings reserved for you and your loved ones. The choir will now lead us in the introit, Break Thou the Bread of Life. to worship. Out of the depths I cry to you, O God. We hunger for the bread of life, O Jesus, and we thirst for you, O God. O God, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. We hunger for the bread of life, O Jesus, and we thirst for you, O God. There is forgiveness with you, and I wait for you, O God. My soul waits, and in his word I put my hope. We hunger for the bread of life, O Jesus, and we thirst for you, O God. In your words I hope. My soul waits for you, God, more than those who watch for the morning. We hunger for the bread of life, O Jesus, and we thirst for you, O God. Amen. Our opening hymn will be Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee, number five in the Voices in Praise hymnal.
now bow our heads in reverence as we engage in the prayer of invocation and adoration. God of healing and transformation, we hunger and thirst for your abundant life. We bring you our sorrow and ask for the bread of joy. We bring you our weariness and ask for the bread of inspiration. Meet us here. We need the bread of heaven to sustain us for our journey, to find our way, that we might be one with you. We sing our praises and thanksgiving to you. Most holy God, as we joyfully worship you in gladness and song, you gather us together through the power and wisdom of your Holy Spirit and transformed us into a community graced and held together by Jesus our Lord. Help us to make the most of our time here today as we seek to glorify you. May you continue to be glorified in and through all we do in Jesus' name today and in all the days to come. Amen. We will now engage in the prayer of confession. Compassionate God, like David, it is not easy for us to confront those deeds which do not please you. We are so busy looking for the miracles we desire. We cannot see the gift of your presence in others. We are so intent on indulging our appetites and satisfying our thirst. We cannot taste the bread which gives life. We spend so much of our lives bemoaning the acts of others. We have no time to look in the mirror and see our secret faces. Forgive us, loving God. Grace us with your mercy so we might be made whole. Touch our inner being and heal us so we might know joy and gladness. Create new hearts within us so they might beat as one with each other and with your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We will now remain silent for a period of silent confession. Please join us in singing the chorus, Creating Me a Clean Heart, O God. assurance of pardon. Despite knowing our sin, God chooses to forgive us. Seeing our emptiness, God chooses to feed us. Holding our shattered hearts, God chooses to heal us. This is the good news. God loves us. God has graced us with mercy and created new life from our brokenness. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. We now lift our hearts in thanks to God with the prayer of thanksgiving. Most loving God, we take too much for granted. Help us to rectify that. 
by your spirit within us, change us into thankful people. May we wander anew each morning at the privilege of being alive and to go to bed each night giving thanks for all that the day's living has given to us. We give thanks for our early encounters with the way of Jesus and for those people whose example has enlarged our faith. For memories on which we can draw when we are low in spirit and those faces we can picture when we are tempted to falter. We give thanks for the hard lessons as well as for the easy, for the frustration and disappointment, the pain and turmoil, and the growing pains of the spirit, for the losses and the tears of grief, through which you have ministered to us, even when we thought you were far away. Most loving God, for these your gifts, many which we have taken for granted, some which at the time we may have complained about as unwelcome impositions, we give gratitude, continue on, not just a matter of words, but as enduring attitude. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. amen. Reverend Knott will now lead us in the children's focus. Good morning, boys and girls. I trust you're all feeling well today. I want to share a few minutes with you as we focus on the theme, we are called to be like Jesus. I want to ask you to just reflect and to think if you have a role model. Some of you might be wondering what a role model even is. It's someone you respect, admire, and want to be like in some way. It might be a famous person, such as a great athlete or a movie star. It might be someone you know personally, like your favorite teacher or your parents, your brother or sister. Whether we realize it or not, we all have role models. It's important that we choose our role models carefully. If we chose a role model just because the person is rich and famous, we'll likely be disappointed. And so if you're looking for a role model, here's a good place to start. We use the Bible to choose our role models. In the book of Ephesians, Paul said to the people in the church of Ephesus, imitate God in everything you do because you are his dear children. And I want you to remember that. Live a life filled with love, following the example of Christ, because he loved us and offered himself as a sacrifice to us. And so, I will share with you some, a few things about Jesus that make him a perfect role model to follow. Jesus is kind, loving, forgiving, patient, obedient, respectful, and truthful, just to name a few. I could go on and on. And so I want you to understand that Jesus is our perfect role model because he's God's perfect son who brings salvation to all who follow him. Remember that as you choose your role model. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending your son to save us and to be the perfect role model for us to follow. Though others may fail, Jesus never fails. And so help these children to live a life that is pleasing to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We will sing the hymn, Praise Him, Praise Him, number 478 in the Voices in Praise. Praise Him, praise Him, all the little children.
we will now join in the ministry of the word and we will pray the collect. God of our pilgrimage, you have willed that the gate of mercy should stand open for those who trust in you. Look upon us with your favor that we who follow the path of your will may never wander from the way of life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. The Old Testament lesson will be read by Sister Cecile Davis. The Old Testament lesson comes to us today from 2 Samuel chapter 18, 15, and then 31 to 33. The king ordered Joab and Abishai and Ittai, saying, Deal gently for my sake with the young man Absalom. And all the people heard when the king gave orders to all the commanders concerning Absalom. So the army went out into the field against Israel, and the battle was fought in the forest of Ephraim. The men of Israel were defeated there by the servants of David, and the slaughter there was great on that day, 20,000 men. The battle spread over the face of all the country, and the forest claimed more victims that day than the sword. Absalom happened to meet the servants of David. Absalom was riding on his mule, and the mule went under the thick branches of a great oak. His head caught fast in the oak, and he was left hanging between heaven and earth, while the mule that was under him went on. Verse 15, and 10 young men, Joab's armor bearers, surrounded Absalom and struck him and killed him. 31 to 33, then the Cushite came and the Cushite said, good tidings for my Lord, the king. For the Lord has vindicated you this day, delivering you from the power of all who rose up against you. The king said to the Cushite, Is it well with the young man Absalom? The Cushite answered, May the enemies of my lord the king and all who rise up to do you harm be like the young man. The king was deeply moved and went up to the chamber over the gate and wept. And as he went, he said, O oh, my son Absalom, my son, my son Absalom, would I had died instead of you. O oh, Absalom, my son, my son. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsive reading will be taken from Psalm 130, number 646 in the Voices in Praise. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you so that you may be revered. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning, more than those who watch for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is great power to redeem. It is he who will redeem Israel from all its iniquities. The Gloria. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The epistle will be read by Sister Joan Williams. The epistle is taken from Ephesians 4, reading from verse 25 to chapter 5 to verse 2. So then, putting away falsehood, let all of us speak the truth to our neighbors, for we are members of one another. 
Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and do not make room for the devil. Thieves must give up stealing. Rather, let them labor and work honestly with their own hands, so as to have something to share with the needy. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for building up. As there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with which you were marked with a seal for the day of redemption. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander, together with all malice. And be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ has forgiven you. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children and live in love, as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragment offering and sacrifice to God. Here ended the reading of the epistle. Thanks be to God. We will join our voices in the hymn, The Lord's My Shepherd, number 33 in the Voices in Praise. The Gospel will be read by Brother Matthew Wright. The Gospel is taken from St. John chapter 6, verse 35 and verse 41 to 51. Glory to you, O God.
Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Verse 41. Then the Jews began to complain about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, Is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, Do not complain among yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the Father who sent me, and I will raise that person upon the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise be to Christ our Lord. We will now listen to Reverend Knott as she brings to us the word that the Lord has laid on our heart, and we hope that it will be a blessing to all of us. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we ask you to quiet our hearts at this time. As you speak to us, may we be attentive to your words. May we respond in obedience. I ask, Lord God, that the words of my mouth and the reflections of all our hearts together, O oh God, be acceptable in your sight, O oh Redeemer and O oh Rock. Amen. Haven't there been times when you ate your fill, whether at the dining table or the table of life, but you weren't satisfied? You were full but not fulfilled. Haven't you sometimes gotten up and walked away from the table thinking or saying to yourself, I am full, but it wasn't that good or what I really wanted. Or maybe you have gotten up from the table still feeling hungry. I think it happens in our spirituality and our life of prayer as well. In our marriages, our families and relationships, in our work and day-to-day -day life, in our search for meaning and purpose. The people in John chapter 6 ate their fill of the loaves and fishes, and now they are back wanting to be filled up again. They ate their fill, but they are still hungry. They ate, but they weren't nourished. I think Jesus is speaking to them in this regard. As he said, do not work for the food that perishes, but the food that endures for eternal life in John 6 and verse 27. My brothers and sisters, our hunger and emptiness are real. Jesus knows that. He also knows they are about more than filling the stomach. I am the bread of life, he said. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Yes, the body needs to be fed and nourished, but so does the soul. Hunger, in whatever form it takes and in whatever ways we feel it, is always a spiritual issue. 
And so I ask you, what is your deep hunger today? What is the hunger that eats and gnaws at your life? What is the emptiness that aches in your life today? What parts of your life are malnourished or undernourished? What are your relationships starving for? And so if you are hungry, I encourage you to feed on the bread of life. If you are feeding that hunger by just simply eating the available food at the time of hunger, or are you feeding it with the bread of life? These two options describe two ways of being and living. It's a choice we make every day. We can either eat what, we, what is available, or we can eat from the bread of life. And so when I speak about the bread of life, I'm talking about more than just the Eucharist. I don't want to take anything away from the Eucharist. I am not denying that the Eucharist can be and is bread of life. But what if it's just one slice in a larger loaf of bread? Jesus fed and nourished the lives of people in various ways. He was present. He listened. He loved. He welcomed and connected with people. He told stories about life and helped people find meaning. He offered mercy and forgiveness. He was compassionate. He touched the hurting and broken places in people's lives. He shared a vision for a new life and a different way of being in the world. He reminded people not to be afraid, to not let their hearts be troubled. He gave hope and peace that the world cannot give. He reminded us that we are one bread, one body, and our neighbor's life matter as much as our own. The lectionary reading today includes the final verse from last week's text, where Jesus identified himself with the statement, I am the bread of life. We read this as signifying that it is Jesus who is capable of sustaining life. This in contrast to the crowd's sense that it was the bread from the miracle of loaves and fish that filled them up. Jesus said to them, I am the bread that came down from heaven. Hearing this, they began to argue because they knew who Jesus was. They know his parents, Mary and Joseph. He was Jesus and he did not come from heaven. So what is he saying? And so Jesus tells them to stop grumbling among themselves. In other words, stop talking and listen to me. These words decisively indicate that the Jews have not yet understood anything that Jesus has said. Jesus begins a new conversation to a decision about who he is. He talks about coming to me the first time it is stated negatively, no one is able to come to me unless drawn by my Father who sent me. And so Jesus refers to scripture from Isaiah 54 and verse 13 and states it positively. All who heard from the Father and learned from them what they heard will come to me. So Jesus declares, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. He uses the prior words of the Jews against them to correct what they think they already understood. Their grumbling was because they were trying to fit Jesus into their frame and reference. Bread equals manna in the wilderness. The miracle of the feeding equals the food that filled their ancestors. Their tradition is all that can provide the context. And so Jesus had to shut them up to provide a different context from the one that was clouding their hearing and understanding. My brothers and sisters, this is not about their ancestors. It is about his father. It is not about food. 
It is about the living bread. Let us reflect on what it means to eat the bread of life, the living bread from heaven. When a loaf of bread is on the shelf, it is not a part of me. But if I buy that bread, take it home, cut it up, eat it, then the bread will become a part of me. The carbohydrate, vitamins, and minerals in the bread will after a short time be transported around my body and give me energy and strength for the day's activities. As long as the word of God, which also can be called bread of life, only exists in letters in my Bible, the word of God has not become a part of me. But if I open the Bible, read what it says, believe as it says, and practice as it says, then the word of God becomes a part of me. And so when the word mixes with faith in me by obedience, then the word become a part of me and has become a benefit and blessing for me. As Philippians 2 and verse 13 reminds us, for it is God who works both to will and to do his good pleasure. The bread of life comes directly from heaven. We can do nothing to produce it. We have to eat it every day. We cannot get a week's worth at church. We cannot hoard it or store it. Yes, we can study it, memorize it, but we need to gather it fresh daily to get each day nourishment, just like the physical bread. What we ate yesterday will not sustain us for today. So spiritually or physically, we are what we eat. We can't get this bread by just eating what is available. We need to eat the living bread. Are you eating the bread of life? The bread of God came down from heaven and gives life to the world. He had not come down of his own will, but the will of him who had sent him. If I make God's will my will, then I eat of the living bread. When God's working and my desire become one and the same, then I have eaten of the living bread. When God's will has become my will, then the will of God has become a part of me. This is how I eat of the heavenly bread. So unless you feed on Jesus, consume him, you will be lifeless. You see, my dear friends, his flesh and blood are the true food and drink. What you eat and drink becomes a part of you. But you will find yourself in him, becoming a part of him, when you consume him. Jesus declares, the God who conceived me is the source of my life and has sent me, serving me up to you. In much the same way, I will be the source of life for whoever digests me. Do you see then that this is the real bread which has come from heaven? It's not like what your ancestors ate in the desert because they ate and they still died. This is different. Those who ate this bread will live life without end and without limit. Christ is the bread that came down from heaven and will give life to the world. In him, the world became flesh. It means the word was realized through his life, a heavenly glory that was revealed through his body, his flesh, his food indeed, and his blood is drink indeed. John 6 and verse 55. So I ask you, are you hungry? Feed on the living bread. It's the only bread that will satisfy your anger. Blessed is everyone who partakes of this living bread.
it's truly a life of eternity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We thank Reverend Lord for her message, and we hope that we were inspired and blessed by these words. Please focus on your attention on the announcements. The Steertown Methodist Church, under the distinguished patronage of the Honorable Norma Walters, C.D., J.P., Custos Rotolorum of St. Anne, invites you to their summer concert on Sunday, August 25th, starting at 4 p.m. The event will feature the Jamaica Constabulary Force Choir, along with other exciting acts. Adults are asked to contribute $1,000 and children under 12, $500. The MCCA women regrets to announce the cancellation of Holiday with a Difference 2024 due to challenges being experienced following the passage of Hurricane Beryl. The Department of Christian Education also regrets to announce the cancellation of Summer Camps 2024. We give thanks to all who continue to support this ministry by viewing and participating actively in the television services. We remind you that this worship experience is designed to engage you in active worship on screen. As such, we ask that weekly, as the hymns are announced and the passages are read, you will also use your hymnals and Bibles to stay engaged, sing, read the scriptures, and pray with us as you are prompted on screen, as if you were in physical worship. For your convenience, we share the orders of service used each time with all who will receive. If you are not already on our mailing list, please request the order at main office at jamaicamethodist.org. You may also visit the district website at www.jamaicamethodist.org to download the document. We are grateful to you for your contribution to this ministry and its upkeep on air. Please make note of contact details on screen to make your financial contribution to this effort. We need your support. Let us now give thanks for what we already received and what we anticipate you will offer for this wonderful work. Let us pray. God who provides, we bless your name for your gifts freely given to us. We are ever mindful that what we possess really belongs to you and that we are merely stewards of these tangible gifts in serving others till you return. We thank you for those who continue to share in the work of proclaiming the good news of salvation through television, the internet, and the world wide web by the offering of their time, talent, and resources. Amen. We will now join in the singing of him, Be Still My Soul, number 189 in the Voices in Praise.
We will now join in the prayers of intercession. Gracious and generous God, in Christ you have given us the true bread from heaven, which gives life to the world. Hear us as we call upon you, and give us all that we need to lead a life worthy of calling to which we have been called. Bread of life, hear our prayers. Holy God, there are times when our prayers seem a weak and ineffective exercise in the face of the world's enormous need. Please keep reminding us that though we are weak and unwise, you have infinite resources and wisdom. May the full and inexhaustible grace of Christ, crucified and risen, keep us praying with faith and serving with humble compassion. Bread of life, hear our prayers. Holy God, we pray for those who feel too broken or too despairing to pray for themselves. Please surround them with your everlasting arms of love and bring some warmth and hope into the bleakest situation. Bread of life, hear our prayers. Holy God, we pray for many who have been subject to injustice and abuse, and all who are used up and then cast aside like garbage. Please bring down tyrants and bullies at every level of life, and lift up the downtrodden and heal the broken in body, mind, and spirit. Bread of life, hear our prayers. Holy God, we pray for all who feed the hungry, tend the injured, stand with the oppressed, host the homeless, watch with the dying, comfort and grieving, encourage the handicapped, empower the weak, and befriend the very fearful. Please widen our love to include all your children on earth. Bread of life, hear our prayers. Holy God, we pray for your church in its glory and in his shame. Help us to repent of our corporate sins and to live the love of Christ among the neglected and the lost, to encourage one another in fellowship and prayer, and to live optimistically by faith and love, where the secular world wrings its hands in despair. Bread of life, hear our prayers. Holy friend, God and Savior, lead us on towards that glory which you have prepared for all who love you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, Amen. Amen. We will now join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We will now join in the closing hymn, Precious Lord, Take My Hand. Number 204 in the Voices in Praise. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, let me stand, I am tired, I am weak, I am worn, through the storm.
Reverend Nott will now pronounce the benediction. Please receive the benediction. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. May we go forth nourished by the bread of life within us. Our spiritual hunger and thirst is satisfied when we honor the God within us. Life is short. Be kind to one another. And may God always hear your voice. May Christ Jesus raise you to new life. And may the Holy Spirit nourish you for the life of love. 